From Aristotle to Newton, science has attempted to answer one of the most eternal questions, what are we made of? Mankind's quest for this answer has brought us to John Dalton's chemistry lab in 1803. It was here where Dalton's atomic theory was born. However, little did Dalton know, his theory initiated a chain reaction of atomic discoveries, which later led to this. Although one of the most controversial moments in history was the decision to use the atomic bomb, what was even more interesting were the events behind the making. I used the term nuclear fission to describe what was happening. What do you mean by remote possibility of a bomb? We will build this weapon to protect our American now freedom. Now I become death, the destroyer of worlds. Let us embark on a journey through time, from the early discoveries of the atom to the aftermath of World War II. We will learn how the making of the atomic bomb rose to become a scientific triumph that promised a new energy source and how its product ended the most lethal war of its time. We will also learn how it failed to become a political tragedy that shattered the security and safety of mankind with its nuclear threat. Continuing on from John Dalton's atomic theory, scientists began finding the pieces that made up the atom. It wasn't until 1932 that two British physicists, James Chadwick and Ernest Rutherford, discovered the neutron, the last puzzle piece to the atom at the time. The neutron turned out to be a key particle that would unlock the secret of atomic energy. Because the neutron carried no charge and could not be deflected by the charged particles of the atom, scientists could use neutrons to bombard the nucleus of atoms to further explore their structure. In 1934, an Italian physicist named Enrico Fermi bombarded uranium with radon neutrons. A strange reaction occurred and radioactivity was produced. However, Fermi did not understand what this meant and published his works so that other scientists might improve on his experiments. In 1938, another group of scientists in Berlin, Germany decided to repeat Fermi's experiments. Their names were Otto Hahn and Fritz Strassmann. When they bombarded uranium with neutrons, they discovered that the reaction produced barium atoms, which were almost half as heavy as uranium atoms. These two top chemists were also astonished to discover that their uranium sample lost some weight. Nevertheless, like Fermi, Hahn and Strassmann could not explain their results. Seeking help, Hahn and Strassmann sent a letter to a colleague of theirs named Lise Meitner. At the time Meitner got the letter, she was in Sweden with her nephew Otto Frisch. While walking in the snow one evening, the two reached the conclusion that the uranium was stretching like a drop of water until it split in two. With Einstein's formula E equals mg squared, Meitner and Frisch also determined that the energy produced in the splitting of one uranium atom was about 200 million electron volts. Finally, after the collaboration of numerous scientists, Otto Frisch would name this reaction nuclear fission, one of the greatest triumphs of science. At the same time that the secrets of atomic energy were being revealed in Europe in 1938 and 1939, World War II had started, and with it, Hitler's final solution to exterminate the Jewish population. These years of Nazi terror caused many leading Jewish-oriented scientists, like Edward Teller, Leo Szilard, and Eugene Wigner, to flee to America, where they all played a major role in constructing the atomic bomb. One physicist who stayed with the Nazis was Werner Heisenberg. Heisenberg was later used as a Nazi tool to head the German effort to build atomic weaponry. However, the Nazi atomic bomb failed because of numerous reasons. One was due to poor funding. The Nazis felt that the bomb would not be completed in time before the end of the war, so they concentrated their fundings elsewhere. Another factor might have been the scientists' reluctance to build a bomb for a totalitarian. By 1939, scientists like Enrico Fermi, Leo Szilard, and Edward Teller realized the potentials of nuclear reaction. Another nuclear physicist at the time, Robert R. Wilson, claims the end view was not to be a bomb, but rather a new and exceedingly intense source of energy. If the nuclear reaction is controlled, the energy produced could drive generators that made electricity, making nuclear power a cheap and plentiful energy source for all of mankind. However, if it is not controlled, as many scientists feared, then the energy released will cause an explosion of massive proportions. Despite the great promise of atomic energy, the thought of the Nazis possessing nuclear weapons became a major concern of the scientists. Thus, on August 2, 1939, Leo Szilard and Edward Teller visited Albert Einstein to discuss these matters. Eventually, the three wrote and signed a letter for President Franklin Roosevelt concerning the Nazi threat and the urgency to secure a supply of uranium for constructing u nuclear weapons. They sent the letter to economic advisor Alexander Soch, a friend of Roosevelt's. Influenced by the letter, Roosevelt set up an advisory committee on uranium, thus starting the journey to making the atomic bomb in America. 
the same time in Great Britain, Otto Frisch, an immigrant German scientist named Rudolf Perls, wrote a secret report on how to turn a nuclear reactor critical for the British government. The Mod Committee, an organization codenamed by British officials, used their findings to develop the Mod reports in 1941, which stated that any scientifically advanced nation could construct an atomic bomb before the end of the war. However, since the German Luftwaffe was heavily bombarding England in the Battle of Britain at the time, the British passed the Mod reports to the U.S., hoping that they could construct the bomb. Constructing the bomb in Britain would mean setting up massive centralized factories and production facilities, which would have been major targets for the German Luftwaffe. Convinced by Einstein's letter and the Mod reports, President Roosevelt decided to commit the nation to building the atomic bomb. The responsibility of building the weapon was placed on the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Colonel J.C. Marshall was ordered to set up a new and extremely secret project to develop the atomic bomb, which was later named the Manhattan Project on August 1942. Brigadier General Leslie Richard Groves later became the military head of the Manhattan Project in September 1942. Groves established refineries that could manufacture uranium in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, and the newly discovered fuel, plutonium, in Hanford, Washington. A little before Fermi and Zillard's first atomic pile, General Groves met with physicist Julius Robert Oppenheimer at Berkeley, California on October 8, 1942. They discussed the research Oppenheimer was doing on the atomic bomb. Groves later named Oppenheimer as the scientific head of the Manhattan Project. Together, the two chose to build a secret laboratory in Los Alamos, New Mexico, where they could bring all the scientists working on the atomic bomb in the U.S. in one place. It was here that the atomic bombs were designed. After two and a half years of feverish hard work, Oppenheimer with a group of scientists designed two bombs, Little Boy and Fat Man. Little Boy had a bullet design that used uranium as its nuclear source. Fat Man had an implosion design that used plutonium as its nuclear source. The scientists were certain that Little Boy would work, but they were insecure about Fat Man and his plutonium source. Thus, they conducted what is known as the Trinity Test to test the Fat Man bomb. On July 16, 1945, a Fat Man prototype was detonated at Alamogordo, New Mexico. It was here that the nuclear age was ushered in with a tremendous explosion whose altitude was over 40,000 feet. The effect of the bomb was so powerful that even a blind girl many miles away noticed its flash. Although Trinity was a success, many scientists felt the horror, regret, and even guilt of what they had accomplished. Even General Groves described the explosion as beautiful but terrifying. This was the tragedy of nuclear fission's discovery. It was used to destroy mankind before it could help it. After four years of hard work and a spending of two billion dollars, the two atomic bombs were used against the Japanese Empire. It was a difficult ethic decision, but in the end, after Japan refused to surrender to an ultimatum, President Truman sent Paul Tippett and his B-29 bomber crew of the Nolage on their mission to drop the atomic bomb. On August 6, 1945, the Little Boy atomic bomb was detonated over Hiroshima, Japan. When Japan still did not surrender, the second atomic bomb, the Fat Man, was detonated over Nagasaki on August 9, 1945. The atomic bomb decisively ended World War II, a celebrated triumph for the Allies. However, this victory was short-lived as it was interrupted by the hostility from the Soviet Union. During the years after World War II, many scientists and politicians wanted to deter the destructive potential of nuclear weapons through international regulation. However, this dream of an international atomic energy agency was shattered when Russia rejected the United States proposal to the United Nations. Having just developed an arsenal of nuclear weapons in 1949 with the help of spies within the Manhattan Project, Russia was not willing to give up their nuclear weapons program. This led to a nuclear arms competition between the two superpowers. Both nations devoted massive amounts of resources to enhance the quality and quantity of their nuclear arms. The anxiety of a full nuclear exchange and the annihilation of mankind finally eased after the end of the Cold War due to the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991. N nuclear weapon testing was banned in the U.S. in 1992. It is truly remarkable to think that such a small atom could have a huge influence on the world. What started as the pursuit to discover the structure of the atom ended with an arsenal of the most destructive power the world has ever seen. Nuclear fission has provided mankind with a new renewable energy source that supplies 17% of the energy used in the world. Nuclear fission also paved way for new topics of fields of science, like nuclear physics. However, in contrast to helping humanity, it has been used in danger. Currently, the United States, Russia, United Kingdom, France, China, India, Pakistan, and North Korea have been confirmed to have nuclear weapons. A nuclear threat could come from any one of these countries, as well as any nations with secret nuclear arms and terrorists that may have gained access to them. Already, we have exceeded the number of nuclear arms needed to end the world. Just like how an atom contains both positive and negative forces, the making of the atomic bomb contains both triumph and tragedy aspects. 